Hi everyone. Based on some of my previous Magix videos, some people have asked me how I managed to produce a sound or a pitch of an instrument that doesn't exist in any of the sound pools or the instruments of the sound pools in Magix. But the truth is, they usually do. It's just that you need to know how to manipulate each individual sound or instrument. And I'm going to demonstrate this by using 80s Dancing on My Own, which is actually a sound pool that's included by default with Magix. And I'm going to use the brass section. And I'm going to use the bottom one from here, just called the brass. These are the pitches, as always. And I'm going to use pitch six, and it sounds like this. And that's it. So I'm going to put a number six on the screen. Doesn't matter where you put it, you can put it on any track. And then I'm going to use a number five, but I'm not going to butt it up to the edge, like so. I'm going to go to the next track down and put it one and a half bars after the start of the first track. Now, when you do this, you'll get this warning message. Should the pitch of the selected object be automatically adjusted when being inserted? What this is telling you is that at the moment, this is playing note A or pitch six, and I'm trying to drop a pitch five over the top of it. But if you say yes, what it will do is change that to a pitch six and keep it the same as this one. But I want to keep it as a pitch five, so on this you say no. And you can now see it tells you here, that's a pitch five and that one's a pitch six. You can only just see it at the end of the bar there. And then I'm going to drop a number four Approximately the same place, again, but let's, let's just try there for a start. And again, it's warning me that this is not the same pitch as that one or that one. But I want to keep it as a pitch four, so I say no, I don't want it changing. And what I want to do is keep this start of this beat here, approximately at the end of where this begins to fade on the previous track. And the same with this one start of this one, start of the fade on the end of that. And then finally I'm going to put a pitch six one back on the top track and there's a reason for this. Right so if you notice this time it didn't tell me that it's going to change it, it's a different note because that is a six and that is a six so I didn't get that warning. Now what I'm going to do is just move this out of the way a moment anywhere just out of the way. What I'm after is I need track one to keep playing while track two starts, and I need track two to keep playing while track three starts. So we end up with a sound similar to this. Let's play it. Stop that. What I'm going to do now is put this object back in place over here. Doesn't matter where at the moment, but as you can see, the start of this note starts just as this last one starts fading. Okay, but I don't want this first piece of note here. I only want from this point, that second piece. If I can play somewhere from there, it's very difficult. I actually want this sound without the start of it. I don't want that initial note. And the way to actually edit that is if you highlight that object and then click on the magnify objects button there, it'll magnify just this object that I've got highlighted. And as you can see, here's the first note and here's the major note at the end. And as with all of the objects, when you move your pointer to the edge of the screen that is not in the center, you'll get a left and right diagonal arrow. That allows you to trim pieces off it. And the same with the right hand side. You can actually extend or trim the right hand side. The center one will give you a vertical double arrow. 
and that allows you to adjust the volume up or down as you can see it reduces the volume but I don't want to play around with the volume so I'll leave that approximately where it was and on the center line at the left and on the right you'll notice you get a double diagonal arrow now strangely on the right hand side it shows you an arrow going from bottom left to top right and on the left hand side it shows you an arrow going from bottom right to top left which indicates that it's going to fade out from the left or fade in from the right I think that's a little idiosyncrasy of magic but we won't worry about that what we want to do at the moment is to cut off this initial note and all I'm going to do is click and drag the edge of this object until it reaches the start of that point there that has now cut off that first piece you've not changed an instrument you've just cropped the very start of it off and then I'm going to exit that and I'm going to move this across because now I've taken the front of it off it's too far over I still want the start of this roughly where this point line the start line is here so drag and drop that across there that'll do for now let's just play this from I don't know, this point here so that we get this last track and then the final one let's just play that stop that all right so now if you notice this has got quite a sharp attack on it it's quite an abrupt shot it's quite an abrupt start if we play this from here you'll hear it see I want to soften the start of this down a little bit I don't want it to be so abrupt again highlight that object again magnify the object and this time we're going to use the fade button here but because this is the whole object this view is a little too large or a little well this view is a little too small to get any small control of this we can only get rather big changes and that's the next bar so we don't want that what you need to do is to zoom into this even further using reduce time section and just keep clicking it don't worry about the fact it's gone off the screen again click and drag this slider across to the right until it appears back on the screen and here we have it move your mouse pointer to the horizontal line to the center the horizontal line and you get this double arrow diagonal arrow click and drag a small amount so you get this slight fade it looks massive here but we're zoomed in quite a lot if we zoom out you'll see that it's actually quite small in fact I need it smaller even smaller than that so let's just find it again I don't want that much that's half a bar I only want a tiny little piece at the start like so exit that and let's see what that sounds like press the space bar try it again now that is not as harsh a start but we can always make it softer again zoom into it as you can see it's so small you can hardly see it there so again let's zoom in again a little bit and let's just add a little bit more not a lot and close that and play it again stop that that sounds a little bit better okay what I might mention at this point is some people will say well why have you used three tracks when you could just put the same instrument on the same track let me just move this out of the way and demonstrate why I've not used that method if you were to take this object and put it even though it's the same instrument just on a different pitch if you click and push that up onto the same track as the first one it produces a crossfade like so nearly all audio editing software assumes you want to cross fade the two objects and what happens now is when you play that it sounds like this Let's play that see and the second one starts off quiet and gets louder and it's even worse if you then decide to add the third one to it at the same place as it is like so 
And if we play that now, it's even worse. Let's play it. Stop that. As you can tell, the crossfades are so confused now that they overlap each other. And although you can actually edit the crossfade points by taking, if you were to zoom to this item, you can still zoom to that object, magnify that object, and you can actually zoom in even more, and you will eventually be able to see where the crossfade points are, but it's incredibly difficult to edit them in here. Very hard. Let's just zoom out. So let's put these back where they came from. That one down there, and that one down there. And we'll just play that again, make sure it stayed the same. Okay, now let's put this little fella back where he came from. Well, I think it was approximately there. Oops, sorry, there. But I don't want this as pitch six. I want this in a pitch that is not available in any of these pitches here. I need it to be a different note. So what I'm going to do is select that object. And down here, if you click on the inspector tab, just above the keyboard, it'll give you a blank screen here, but there are effects you can apply to that object or any amount of objects you've got selected. So this object, you can apply these effects to it. And when you click on one of these, it will show you the settings for that object. This is where it's pitches, and vertically is the pitch, horizontally is the speed. And they can be adjusted using these dials here. You can change the speed, and as you can see, it moves it up and down, and also stretches on the screen. But we don't need to change the speed. I just want to change the pitch. And you can change the pitch using this dial, click and turn, or what I find easier is to use the plus and minus buttons. What I'm going to do is take that down by seven half tones, nothing more. And then I'm going to play that from here, and you'll notice this is now a different note. Okay. And that, that effect is immediate. You don't have to save it or anything. You can display the keyboard again if you want to. Click away from that. Now let's play that from the start and see what that sounds like. Now you may have noticed there's some clicking there when it plays this last object. That's not unusual, but that won't, that won't manifest itself on the final piece of music that you generate when you create an MP3 for it. In fact, if you continually keep playing that from here, eventually it will level itself out. Let's play it a couple of three times. See, there was a glitch there, and again. Which is now gone. And that's what it will sound like when you render it or export it. So let's zoom to the entire project. Put the start of pointer at the start and let's play the whole thing. 